Motion be agreed to. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, thank you very much and I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Minister who's just resumed his seat, the Honourable David Carter, and to wish him well for his bid uh, for your chair, Mr Speaker. Can I uh, also acknowledge uh, the late Sir Paul Callaghan, a, a very distinguished scientist and author of the book From Wool to Wetter, a passionate advocate of a high-tech uh, strategy for the New Zealand economy, and to note that uh, we are a long way from the noble aspirations that Sir Paul has left us with. Now, this bill will make a very small but unfortunately insignificant contribution to that goal. Labor is supporting the bill because it would be inappropriate not to. Uh, but, Mr Speaker, I wish to comment in these remarks on the great gap that will remain uh, between the government's rhetoric and the strategy which their policies are employing. Mr Speaker, just in the last week, uh, we are reminded again of that gap. Uh, higher, bought out Fisher and Paykel appliances, and we stand to lose, uh, I think, the country's second largest provider of patents to overseas uh, deployment and ownership. Uh, Hillside Workshops has again been in the news with the chief executive of Farrah Engineering criticising the failure of the government's policy mix to reflect the overall interests of the region's engineering and manufacturing sector in the SOE's decision making. Today the government has presided over the further watering down of the emissions trading scheme to reduce the incentives for smart clean technology. Dynamic Controls announced a downsizing of its Canterbury plant and unemployment, here's the kicker, hit 7.3 per cent against projections of a decline. It actually went up by a massive 0.6 of a per cent the worst since Bill English was last the Minister of Finance in 1999. Mr Speaker, why is this happening? I guess the key point is it's not an accident. It is the logical, the necessary outgrowth of a fundamentally flawed strategic framework which this bill does not change. Mr Speaker, what did the government think would happen when they have a tax system that favours speculation over high tech? which has no capital gains regime, almost alone in the Western world in that, no R&D tax credit, no accelerated depreciation for high technology. Mr Speaker, what did they think would happen with an insufficient savings regime that starves local business and high tech of investment capital and makes them overly reliant on imported overseas capital and the sellout of ownership, which that too often, too young, too frequently uh, requires. What do they think would happen if they continue to subsidise pastoral agriculture by not bringing it into the emissions trading scheme and providing irrigation subsidies while starving industrial and manufacturing industries of the investment capital and the fair opportunities that they need? We have a perpetual bias in our economic framework that is seeing farms and banks do OK, banks do more than OK, but industry, high tech and manufacturing sliding to what looks like an eventual demise. Meantime, we're exploiting mineral and petroleum resources through foreign-owned multinationals through which we claim too little in royalties and through which we will lose control of our underlying resources. And the government is failing to provide appropriate market signals to state-owned enterprises like Hillside and Dunedin and instead dressing them for sale. They are running a 20th century monetary policy framework at a 21st century global financial crisis and wondering why our exchange and interest rates are too high and our current account deficit overtaking Greece to become the worst in the developed world. These are not accidental consequences. These are the logical, the predictable, the necessary, the scientifically proven results of a fundamentally flawed economic framework. What do we get? High unemployment, our world record current account deficit, manufacturing and high tech in crisis. What to do, says the government. How will we dress this up, says the spin doctor. Well, National is too locked in to its low-tech, dumb development strategy to change that. 
Its political constituencies and its own rhetoric won't allow it to make that change, and what it desperately wants to avoid is for the public to get the idea that to change the strategy, they first have to change the government. To change the strategy, they change the government. And this side of the House will rise to that historic responsibility because that side of the House not only won't, but can't. And so they came up with the following plan. In Budget 2012, they would cut vote economic development by something like $130 million, and they would reinvest about one-third of it in the ATI. And they would have the ATI bill, which they would then trumpet as the solution to the decline of high tech. Well, as a former director of Industrial Research Limited, the current name of that body, before they invoke the name of the late and great Sir Paul Callaghan, a director of the current body said to me, the bill is flawed. Why? Because companies, he said, are best placed to understand their own technology needs. What they need is more support around finance and marketing and internationalisation. And this bill won't help the commercialisation process. No personal interest in that. No personal interest in that. No personal interest. That is scraping the barrel, Mr Simpson. Scraping the barrel. Mr Speaker, so if a fig leaf is required, that is this bill. Mr Speaker, Labor supports the bill. Might the public be surprised? Well, I suppose a fig leaf is better than no leaf. And throwing a few crumbs at manufacturing is about all this government's capable of. We'll take the crumbs and then when we're elected in two years' time, we'll have a decent strategic framework and a proper policy mix as well. And then we will see unemployment come down and then we will see exports go up and then we will see hope in the eyes of young New Zealanders, especially young science graduates again. And then we will see a decline in the queues to the departure gates for Kiwis whose dream is faded and whose future is fading and whose commitment to the current government is gone. Mr Speaker, one thing which cheers me up is that the polls are not lying. This government's hold on New Zealand is weakening day by day, week by week, month by month. The right track, wrong track has crossed over. The left block is ahead of the right block on most polls. And, Mr Speaker, change is coming. Change is coming. It just can't come soon enough. It can't come soon enough for the high-tech firms. It can't come soon enough for the Dunedin Manufacturing Cluster. It can't come soon enough for the 7.3 per cent of New Zealanders on the unemployment scrappy up from, oh, they've gone quiet now. Oh, where are the wheat picks now, National Backbench? Let me say it again, 7.3 per cent. Budget 2011 said 5 per cent by now, 5 per cent. But it went up, not down, from 6.6, 6.7 to 6.6. It went up from 6.7 to 7.3. It's a catastrophe, and it's a predictable catastrophe. It is the logical outgrowth of a flawed strategic framework and policies that aren't worth the paper the glossies are written on. And Stephen Joyce fiddles while Rome burns. Stephen Joyce, whose main claim to fame is pumping out glossy papers to repeat projects that were done in yesteryear, and this fig leaf for the science community. What the science community is saying to the Labour opposition is get a real plan, guys. Sure, we'll take ATI, that's fine, but get a real plan because New Zealand's future does not lie in chopping down and exporting raw logs. It doesn't just lie in milking more cows. Sir Paul Callaghan, he was a great man and his vision was from wool to wetter from wall to digital technology. It wasn't subsidies for polluters 
and borrowing to pay for it. It wasn't locking in the industries of yesteryear with a flawed monetary policy and a flawed tax framework. Oh yeah, we'll take this bill, but we want a whole lot more besides. Change the Sorry strategy, to interrupt the honourable change member. the government. This time has expired. Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased.